Diode-based lasers are capable of producing incredibly detailed engravings on a wide range of materials. With their increasing growth and popularity, we wanted to put together a video covering some of the more common errors we see. The goal is to help educate you on these issues so that if you do encounter them, you're both familiar with the potential cause as well as the steps to take in resolving them. Most of these will be machine agnostic, with a couple being specific to Orter lasers. We highly recommend watching the video all the way through so that you don't miss anything covered, but we will also have timestamps available if there is a specific topic you're looking for help with. If you've previously run your laser with Lightburn and are no longer able to connect, the most common issue is that the COM port has changed. With your laser both powered on and plugged into your computer through USB, head over to the laser window in Lightburn. Next to devices, there's a drop down menu with all active COM ports. If you have more than one option, try cycling through them until you find the one that connects to your laser. It is recommended to also have the console window in view so that you can quickly see when the laser connects. If the connection is intermittent, the likely culprit is the USB cable. Start off by unplugging the USB cable from both your computer and your laser and then reseating them. If you're still having issues, it's a good idea to replace the USB cable. Most diode lasers use a USB-A to USB-B cable. Another source of issues is the use of USB extension cables. These are known to be problematic, and if you do need to use one, we highly recommend getting a powered extender. If you're having issues that are power related, reseat your power cable to make sure it is secure. Most diode lasers will have their power rating on them, so confirm that the power supply you're using is adequate for supplying enough power to your machine. There are a few machines that offer an upgrade path for the laser module. If you do upgrade the laser to a more powerful diode, you will need a matching power supply capable of handling the increased demand. Many of the diode lasers use a power supply with a fairly standard barrel jack connector used for other devices as well. If you move the laser around, make sure you're using the power supply specific to that machine. Most diode lasers come as kits that require some assembly before you can use them. As part of the assembly, you may need to tension the belts for the X and Y axis. If they're not tightened enough or have come loose over time, this can prevent your laser from being able to engrave sharp corners or even cause it to skip around. Tensioning the belts is fairly simple. On a machine like the X-Tool D1, there are built-in belt tensioners that you can use to tighten the belts. On other machines like the Sculptfun S9, you'll need to loosen the screw holding the belt in place and use pliers to pull the belt outward while using your other hand to then tighten the belt screw. If your belts are tight, another thing to check is the small set screw on the stepper motor pulley. Each stepper motor will have a pulley with one or two small set screws holding it in place on the motor shaft. These can also become loose and you will need a small Allen key to tighten them. You want to hand tighten these and not torque them as they are small and can be stripped fairly easily. Aside from hardware, it is possible that you're running your job too fast, which is causing the stepper motor to skip a step. It is a good idea to lower your speeds if you've been pushing them to see if this resolves your issue. If you're noticing that the output of your laser seems very low, even at higher power values, the S value max set in your machine's firmware may not be matching with Lightburn. On current GRBL firmware versions, this is often set to 1000, while older versions may have it set to 255. The number itself isn't as important as making sure Lightbird matches with your machine. If you type dollar sign dollar sign into the console, it will display your machine's settings and we're looking for the dollar sign 30 value. All the GRBL commands used in this video will begin with the dollar sign, so moving forward, I will just refer to it as dollar. Once you have that $30 value, we'll need to go to our device settings, which we can access by clicking the wrench icon in the top toolbar. In the pop-up window, we will see the S value max towards the bottom right. We will need to update this value to reflect what we got from the machine's firmware. Once input, click OK to save those changes. In addition to ensuring you have your S value max set correctly, smoke and residue from running your laser will build up on your lens over time. This will have a negative impact on your laser's strength and over time can damage the lens. Regular cleaning of the lens will ensure you get the maximum life out of your diode. Most current diode lasers use a fixed lens that is simple to clean. 
We recommend removing the laser from the gantry and using a bit of isopropyl alcohol to wipe down the housing around the lens. If removing the laser is not possible, tilting the machine a bit should give you enough access for cleaning. Higher percentage will work better, but if you only have rubbing alcohol, it will still do a decent job. Once the housing has been cleaned, taking a Q-tip with some alcohol will allow you to reach the lens. Twist the Q-tip a few times and repeat this process until you no longer see dirt on the Q-tip. Once complete, all that's left is to reinstall the laser on your machine. GRBL firmware, which is used on most diode lasers, was originally designed for CNC milling machines. Over the years, it has been adapted to work with lasers and now even has a laser mode. If you're running an engraving and notice that the laser is not turning off during travel movements, there's a good chance that it is not in laser mode. This is easy to check. In the console, type in $$ to see the current firmware settings for your machine. The specific value we're looking for is $$32. The value we want to see is 1 for laser mode. If your $$32 returns 0 for its current value, we'll need to input $$32 equals 1 into the console. You can enter $$ one more time after to confirm that the value has been set in your firmware. Grounding issues can cause a host of strange behaviors from your machine, but they usually result in freezing mid-job or the laser resetting. This most commonly happens during a fairly long raster engrave due to static buildup. We have seen instances where the console will also show strange symbols when the machine does freeze. Some machines will have grounding cables that you will screw into the frame, the laser head, or both. Start off by making sure that those screws are secure and the grounding wires have not come loose. If that checks out and you're still having these issues, you may need to bond the frame together to prevent any one section from building too much of a static charge. Orchard does have a wire loom kit they released to help on some of their older machines that were more prone to this. This process involves taking a grounding wire and adding multiple points of attachment. In the Orchard example, there's a grounding point on the head of the laser, the X carriage, and the frame of the machine. Even if you do not have an Orchard laser, the video guide they created can be applied and adapted to most similar diode lasers. I'll place links in the video description over to their article and video. This error is specific to the Orter Laser Master Pro 2 and is caused by the built-in flame detection sensor. This can false trigger when running a job or if there's a lot of ambient light caused by a window or separate light source. The first step here is to make sure that you are on the latest firmware version for your machine. When connecting your machine to Lightburn, the console will tell you which firmware version you're currently on. There are a few different versions of the Orter Laser Master 2 Pro depending on the laser module you're running. I'll link to the firmware page on Orter's website where you can download the latest firmware and there's also a PDF on that page that will take you through the update process. After updating the firmware, if you're still having issues, you can disable the flame sensor by entering $261 equals zero into the console. Another one specific to the Orter Laser Master 2 Pro is the shock sensor. The purpose of this sensor is to stop the laser from firing if the machine is bumped while running. Similar to the flame sensor alarm, you'll want to start by making sure you're on the latest firmware from Orter, and if you're not, you will need to update. The latest firmware has raised this threshold value to 400, which should prevent it from false triggering. If you are still having issues with false flags, you can disable it by entering $262 equals zero into the console. This has been common diode laser issues and how to troubleshoot them. You should now have a much better understanding of things to look out for on your diode laser engravers and the tools to troubleshoot should an issue arise. The Lightbird forums are a great resource for getting help and searching for additional information on topics covered in this video. If you have not already, I would highly recommend making an account over there and we'll have a link to our forums in the description of this video. Also, be sure to take a look at our existing YouTube video playlist for many more guides.